Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I've been out there in the guard working this morning. It's starting to look pretty good. Took some of y'all's advice on some stuff I need to do out there, and uh, it is working out great. Hope to show y'all uh, kind of what's going on in a couple weeks. Give y'all a little update on how that's going. But what I'm going to do today, I went and I made a list of approximately what it costs to buy everything that you need to mount a deer. I've had a lot of questions about uh, what you need in a taxidermy shop or just what you need to mount one deer. And I, I've got another video on my channel about, you know, kind of what you need, the basics of what you need, uh, up to about, I don't know, several months ago before I got my flesh machine and, and upgraded a few things. But what I've done, I've got me a cheat sheet here so that I don't forget anything, but I've made a list of everything that you're pretty much going to have to have. And I'm going to kind of break everything down and let y'all know why and some of the differences between what I do and some of the other options you've got out there. But this is going to be basically what it would cost you to mount a deer the exact way that I mount it. There's so many different ways to do it that I'll just never be able to get into all of it. But in general, this is about what it's going to cost you. I'm going to kind of go in order based on the order that you're going to need to use the products in just to kind of keep it simple and to try and keep from forgetting anything. If there's anything that I forget once I get through this, y'all please comment below and I'll try to answer those questions and kind of get that figured out for y'all. Also, any of this stuff that is available on Amazon, I'm going to have a link in the description to my other video showing what you need in a taxidermy shop. And most of this that is available on Amazon should be the link for it in the description. So if there's something that y'all don't see on there, have a question about, let me know and I'll see if I can look it up and see if it's something that they've got. And if it's something that they do have that I use, I'll go ahead and add that uh, to one of those links too. The links don't cost you any more to use my links. It will just take you straight to that item on Amazon, make it a little bit easier to find for y'all. Okay, we'll start now. We're going to start out with salt. Uh, salt is going to be about 65 cents to $1.50 a container, something like that. That's for the regular canister. I think it's about 1.66 pounds or something weird if you go and buy it like at a grocery store. The tanning instructions that I have read in the past have all suggested non-iodized salt. Now, I have heard that it doesn't make any difference if you used iodized salt. Uh, I have always used non-iodized just because of what it says on the instructions. So just to keep any kind of guesswork out of it, I would suggest not using iodized salt just because they say not to. So that being said, on the canister, it will say plain salt. Usually under that, it will say this does not contain iodine. Usually the iodized will actually specifically say iodized salt on the canister. And you can get that for as cheap as $65, I mean, 65 cents a canister, I'm sorry. And uh, it's going to take you around 12 pounds to do a cape. Uh, I've got about two uh, containers for the salting process once it's fleshed. It's going to take about uh, three containers to pickle the, the cape. It takes five pounds, so you're looking about right at three containers. And then you're going to have to have a couple more containers to rehydrate your cape after it has been salted. Uh, that's going to be before it goes into the pickle. So that's, you're looking at about 12 pounds. Now for 12 pounds, you're looking at, what is that, $4.55. That's somewhere around, I think, best case scenario. Uh, the way that I buy it and that I would suggest to buy it, especially if you're planning on doing more than just one deer, you can get an, a bag, a 40 pound bag of salt for about eight bucks. Uh, sometimes cheaper than that. If you can find it at a supply store, like a, uh, a tax store or any kind of like outdoor building supply place, like some of those places have got cheap, like feed stores, sometimes they've got cheap salt. You just want to be careful and make sure that it's very fine. Uh, the more coarse the granules, the more you're going to have fall off the cape and also the less it's going to dissolve trying to get into that cape and it really needs to penetrate to be able to draw all those fluids out of that cape. So the, the finer the salt, the better. I use Clorox fast dissolving pool salt. That's my favorite. You can usually find it for about $7.50 to $8 for 40 pounds. So the difference you're, you're looking at 39 cents a pound in the canister or 20 cents a pound 
in the bag. Uh, so, you know, if you think you'll go through a 40 pound bag, it, it's not going to be, but about, it's going to cost you about $3 more to buy a 40 pound bag as opposed to 12 pounds. So that's what you're looking at there. All right, we're going to move on to the tan. Uh, if you're just planning on doing a deer or a couple of deer, what I would suggest is getting a tanning kit similar to McKenzie's. They offer a tanning kit that it's not to do a whole deer. It's just for your mount, or just for your uh, tanning. And what it's going to include is McKenzie pickling acid and McKenzie tan. Uh, both of those are going to be an eight ounce bottle. You can get that kit for $23. Uh, that's going to be before tax and shipping but it will be enough to do two whole deer capes and that's going to take care of your tan and your acid. Now you can buy it. What I use is pro one. I use pro one, uh, tanning chemicals. Now I don't know what sizes they sell. You'll have to get in touch with them and find out pricing on stuff. If they've got something in a smaller container, uh, you may be able to do that. And then of course add, you know, tax and shipping. All right. On to modeling clay. You can get modeling clay just about anywhere. Uh, the first few deer that I did, I went to Walmart and bought Crayola in a plastic tub. Now buying it that way, you can get a smaller amount, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna pay way more uh, per pound for clay. And clay, you can, that at Walmart is probably gonna cost you between eight and $12 right in there, depending on how much it is at the time. And you can get a 25 pound block of clay for about 25 bucks. So, you know, for what you're paying for it, for a small thing of it, the 25 pound block is really the way to go, especially if you're going to use it for anything else or if you're going to try to do multiple deer. Uh, the glue, like a hide paste, I think you're going to want to get probably a quart of hide paste. Um, you're obviously going to have some left over, but they also sell it in a gallon. You get five gallon buckets. I always buy mine in five gallon tubs. It's exponentially cheaper to buy if you're going to do several deer heads to buy it in a bigger, bigger container. But for a quart, you're looking at around $15 for about the cheapest. And then I use pro one hide paste. So you'd have to contact them depending on what size that you need to figure out exactly how much that's going to be. And of course, then add tax and shipping your Cape needle. You will have to have a needle. You're going to want to buy a three edged needle that has got three flat edges on it. It cuts like a knife. You don't want to buy a cone shaped needle like you would use on, uh, three, I mean, uh, on materials like clothing and furniture. That's going to run you between about two and $3. I use an L shaped needle. That's two and a half inches long. I think it's about a dollar 75, something like that. We'll move on to Cape thread. Uh, a sinew thread for a big spool of sinew threads, about $11, or you can get a B55 bowstring thread, which is about 17 on Amazon. Now you can get that thread a little bit cheaper through some taxidermy supply companies. And some of these items are going to be that way where Amazon looks like it may be a little bit higher on some items, but on most of those items, they will also offer free shipping. So for what shipping costs are nowadays, it sometimes it is way, way cheaper to save on shipping uh, than it is to save the extra few dollars on the product itself. Now, some of the supply companies will sell a B50 bowstring as a cape thread. I use a B55. Uh, reason being the B50 has got a little bit more stretch to it. They'll both work great, but I prefer to have nearly zero stretch. I don't like that cape as it dries. I don't want it to move if possible. So I use pretty much a zero stretch, a B55, uh, works really, really well. And uh, that has been my favorite and still is my favorite. So we're going to move on to forms. Uh, forms are going to depend on your supply company. You can get forms that range anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars. That's going to depend on the size of the form. Uh, the smaller forms are a lot cheaper as they get bigger. They're going to be more obviously. And as you get into your pedestals and stuff, the form prices are going to go up yet again. Uh, now, when I order from Mears, like Mears Tax and Resupply, most of their stuff is right around $70, $75. Whereas McKenzie's, you're going to run into anything from $85 to $95. Uh, McKenzie forms come with a hanger on the back. Um, Mears does not, and some of the other companies do not. You have to order them separately. But the, for the cost of the hanger, 
for a regular deer uh, hanger for back of a regular shoulder mount is only a dollar uh, or less than a dollar. Most of them run about 70 at 80 cents. So for the money you're saving on the form, if you can get a form for 70 bucks as opposed to 95, obviously do that. Uh, and then obviously you're gonna have to pay shipping and tax. Your pedestal hangers are gonna be a little bit higher. They're, you're gonna look at about, uh, I think they're $12 for the lock, the super lock system, which has got a, two tabs with another tab that slides down into those and it keeps your pedestal from, from falling side to side. So if you're gonna do a pedestal mount, you definitely wanna order one of those along with it. I said that's gonna be about $12 uh, in, in McKinsey. Uh, book anyway or McKenzie on, online. All right, moving on to eyes. A regular non banded aspheric eye, like a payer, for instance, is about $9. Uh, that's pretty much bottom line. They're going to be, you know, $8.50 to $9, depending on the size of the eye. It's going to go up just a little bit. Uh, and then all the way up to about $25 for some of your competition eyes, your Joe Meter liquid lens eyes, which are my personal favorite eye that's made, they're about $23. And that's before shipping and tax, really expensive. But if the customer wants that, I'll special order those, charge them extra for those eyes and work it out that way. But they are as cheap as nine bucks, depending on what you want to go with. My regular, what I'll put in a normal mount, if nobody wants anything special, is a regular payer, dark, non-banded eye. It's, it comes about $8.75, I think, for a pair of those eyes. Epoxy sculpt. Uh, for you doing your sculpt, your uh, you know epoxy work once the deer is dry, you're looking at anywhere from $13 to about $35. The $13 is going to be a quarter pound, very, very small little, little container. It's a two-part epoxy. It'll come in two little small containers, which will, will be enough to do one deer. Uh, but you're still looking at $30, $13 for just a quarter pound, whereas for $35, you can get a full pound, you know, and, and really, I mean, save a lot of money that way. Uh, it also changes a little bit with the color. Some of the colors are a little bit more expensive. You're not looking but a, a dollar or two here or there, depending on what color that you buy, but it will alter just a little bit, and that's before shipping and tax. So then we're moving on to paint. You're going to have to have some kind of paint. Uh, most paint, just a regular size bottle of paint, is usually about four, between four and six dollars. Depends on what brand you buy. If it's airbrush paint or acrylic, uh, if you're going to be be hand brushing, uh, you're probably going to want acrylic paint. It's a little bit easier to work with than than uh, airbrush paint on brush brushes. Plus, you can mix it a little bit. It's a little bit thicker, so it'll stick to a, a brush a little bit better. Uh, but you're you're probably going to need about four colors of paint, uh, a black a brown, a pink, and a white. I would suggest having at least that. I also use a sand color or a light tan, uh, but you could make that color with brown and white, you know, if you wanted to, but those those four, black, brown, pink, and white, you could mix those to get a deer mounted if you wanted to do that. Some of this stuff is stuff that you'll have laying around the house. So, you know, the total of all of this is gonna really depend on if you've got some paint at home, if you've got some kind of thread. I mean, you could use braided fishing line if you wanted to sew it up with that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do. My first few deer that I did, you know, I didn't have half of this stuff. So, but anyway, moving on. They they make a mounting kit. You may have seen these before where you can buy a kit that contains everything you need to mount a deer head. All you have to do is pretty much order the size form that you need and they'll base the pricing on what that form costs plus the rest of everything else. Prices on that starts out at $185. The difference between that and what I do is you're looking at more of a dry preservative. You can buy some that come with dry preservatives, and you can buy some that do like a borax and tanning cream. Uh, both of those I personally do not recommend. There's nothing wrong with doing it. Um, some of the best taxidermists that I know, uh, they still use dry preservatives and they, they put out some excellent work, but it's going to be one of those things that if you're inexperienced, even though it is more of a process to tan a hide, if you will kind of follow my instructions on some of my other videos, or if you've got any questions, you know, message me on those videos, comment on those videos, 
and I'll answer any of those questions that you have. And be sure to comment on there rather than sending me private messages because that way everybody else can see the answers to those questions and it will keep me from having to repeat myself on, on how some of that stuff works. But I really believe that you can tan a cape for your first try and come out with a better finished product than if you try to use dry preservative for the first time and it has a tendency to get bugs in it, rot, everything else, if you don't do everything just like you're supposed to do it. Okay, so the total of all of that stuff, that will pretty much get a deer mounted for you. Um, that is, with no tools, that's assuming that you've got a knife at the house, that you make your own flesh and beam. Like, this is the stuff that I had to buy and then used household items to do all of the work with, basically. That's looking at about $187 if you buy the bare minimum cheapest way to do every single bit of it. Uh, I would go ahead and say it's going to run you about 200 bucks to get what you're going to want to buy to save money for your next year or two. Uh, and that is also before tax and it is before shipping. So shipping costs, let's move on to that a little bit, kind of give you a little bit of an idea. Shipping costs vary greatly depending on the size of the box. A lot of that stuff is, is priced based on size, not based on weight. So what you'll run into, if you buy everything that you need to mount one deer, it's going to come in a box that's big enough for the form to fit in. And the last time that I ordered one form, that I had to order one form by itself, the form ran me about $72. And shipping on that form, I believe, was $60. So if you order about three or four forms, the box is not going to be all that much bigger. They'll have those things crammed in there in a way that you'll never get them back in there again the same way to save room and to save packaging. And what it does is, is it also saves you on shipping. So when you go to buy, say, four forms at one time, it may only run you $80 for shipping, whereas one form may run you $60 or $70. So the way that I do things, I will not order one form unless somebody has paid to expedite a deer head and paid the extra money, which covers all of that for me. I'll wait until I have a minimum to where I can order everything in and save that money on shipping and stuff because you're going to charge the same amount for the deer head and it's going to cost you on the front end if you don't do it that way. But just expect if you want to mount a deer for yourself, uh, you're going to have to pay that huge shipping cost at first. So you know, what's going to cost you, say it's going to cost you $200 in supplies. Uh, it's probably going to cost you another $60 to $80 in shipping. So I would go ahead and write down $300 bucks, uh, to plan on spending to get that deer mounted up uh, if you're going to do it yourself. Now, here's some things that I use in my shop that you may or may not have at home or you may or may not be able to buy or find or buy, you know, used, the stuff that you're going to need. And I'll tell you how I did it the first time I ever mounted a deer. Number one, a mounting stand, something that you can mount that deer to. It's going to have to be mounted to something to be able to mount it. First one I ever mounted, I, I actually screwed to a pallet and leaned the pallet up against a table. It was horrible to have to do, but a mounting stand can run you three to $400. And, you know, it's, it's not something a lot of people are going to want to spend money on unless they, they if you can weld and have got some materials that you can weld up a stand, that is awesome. Uh, it's a lot easier than screwing it to a pallet or screwing it to, you know, a, a board or something. But you'll have to mount it to something to be able to, to, you know, put the cape on, stitch it up. You're going to have to be able to get to the back side of it to stitch it. So always keep that in mind, too. All right, moving on. Knife or scalpel. I use a number 11 hobby knife. So... It's, they're cheap. They're, they're under five bucks. So you can buy those things. I mean, a dime a dozen. And I would definitely use that as opposed to trying to use a knife for your first time because they are so razor sharp. You don't have to worry about keeping a knife sharp as you're going. If you have to, you can always put in a new blade. And for somebody that's new that's doing this, a lot of them are not familiar with sharpening knives, sharpening blades. And on some of this, like turning lips, Stuff like that, you need something that is razor, razor sharp. A fleshing beam. Somewhere that you can put that, that cape over to get all that meat and fat off of it. I built one out of a piece of cedar. All it is is just a beam that comes up off the table like that at an angle. And it's got a, a kind of a pointed top on it to where you can run that up in the nose of the deer as you're, as you're fleshing it. 
You can do it laying flat on the table. That's how I did my first one, but it is really, really hard. The, the cape, you know, is doubled over on itself. So it has a tendency to move. And if it's not stretched tight and very flat on the table, it's very hard to flesh with a knife without cutting holes in it. So even if you have to run, you know, a two by six up into the cape to stretch it over the top of, at least do that. All right, ear turners. Ear turners work backwards from a pair of pliers. It's like a long pair of needle nose almost. When you squeeze it, they open. And what that does when you go up in that ear, it'll pop that loose from that cartilage and you can turn the ear inside out, which is what you'll need to do. Even if you're gonna use Bondo inside the ears, you're gonna to have to pop the ear loose and turn it inside out to be able to tan it, salt it, all that good stuff uh, to get it ready to mount. The first time I'd ever did one, I did not have ear turners. I used a butcher steel out of my kitchen and I ran it up in that ear and I just kept pressing a little bit at a time until it popped all the skin loose from the back of that ear and it separated it uh, into two pieces. So you, it can be done that way. You just have to be careful. Okay, a form prep tool. I personally don't have a form prep tool. What I did is I took a piece of wood and I drilled some or screwed some screws through it and it just has screws coming out of it and I use it like a rasp. I use it to scrape up my form. Uh, when a form is made, it has got a kind of a, a uh, layer of stuff on it to, to keep it from sticking to the mold. And that layer gets dried on the outside of there. Some forms are worse than others. The Pro One hide paste that I use typically will bond to that. Uh, it, it will hang on to almost anything. But I do like to, to rough some of that stuff off of there so that it has just raw foam to where it will bond to it. Some other great way to do it is you can take screws or nails and poke holes all in it. And that glue will go down in those holes as it's sticking to that cape and kind of give it little anchor points. I really like using that method when I do my mounts, especially down in your muscles, uh, up around the face and some of the face details where there's low spots where it could drum. Poke those holes in it and it will help keep that sucked up against there pretty well. Okay, pins. I don't pin my deer unless there is just some kind of something wrong or Sometimes up in the armpit on certain forms, it doesn't want to stay real well. I might put a pin or two in there with some kind of pins. I mean, you can use clothing pins. You can use whatever you want to, thumbtacks, you know, something like that will work fine too. A Dremel tool. You'll have to have some way to cut the lips of the deer. And if you want to do the tear duct to be able to tuck all that, a Dremel tool is not all that expensive. And if you're going to try to mount several deer, you definitely need to buy a Dremel tool. Uh, you can do that with a knife stuff. The first year that I did, I used my scalpel and I carved all of that out a little bit at a time. Uh, it's a good way to start out because you're not removing very much material at a time. You can control what you're trying to do. An airbrush and compressor. That's not a that is not a necessity <laughs> and it is not necessary <laughs> to have an airbrush. When I did my first several, I used a brush, just a regular paintbrush. You can mix colors uh, kind of a little trick to using a paintbrush is when you apply your base coat, like say you're going to do a light color around the eye and then go back with a dark color. When you put that base coat on, don't let it fully dry. When you go to do your next one, do like a wet on wet paint to where your darker layer blends slightly with that lighter layer and it will help transition those colors to where you don't have hard lines on there. It makes it look a little bit softer with a softer finish. Alrighty, modeling tools. You're gonna to have to do something to tuck the lips, tuck the eyes and all. First thing I ever used is a carburetor screwdriver. And if y'all watch any of my videos, you still know that I still use a carburetor screwdriver. I've got modeling tools that I use on the eyes, tucking tools for the lips, everything. But when I get done tucking my lips, I'll still take that, that screwdriver, put it up in there and twist it. And it pulls that lip up in there tight and I haven't found another another uh, tool that works as well as that does. So, I mean, if you've got any tiny kind of little flathead screwdrivers or anything in the house, you can make that work. Just be careful not to poke holes uh, in your cape while you're doing it. All right, staple gun and staples. On the back side of your form, it's going to be made out of wood. It's going to be a piece of plywood. And when you pull that cape around the back, you're going to have to staple it on the back of there to, to make it stay. So if you've got staples at the house, any kind of like a T-50, uh, stapler or a pneumatic stapler. Both of those work great. So you may already have them at home, but it's something that you're going to want to think about. Okay, a cape stretcher. My cape stretcher that I was using, 
is uh, it was homemade. A friend of mine made it out of a card jack and welded a split piece of iron pipe to both sides of it where I could jack it apart, you know, and, and use it that way. There's a bunch of different ways you can make a cape stretcher. You can even take two pieces of pipe on a hinge and run your cape up in there and just pull it and it will, it will stretch that cape. But if you're not using a fleshing machine, which is the next thing on my list, if you don't have a fleshing machine, a fleshing machine is going to run you anywhere from a thousand to three thousand dollars, and they're they're not cheap. And I have never seen a cheap one. Now you can buy little handheld mini fleshers and stuff uh, for a whole lot cheaper than you can buy a full size flesher. But if you don't have one and just want to try to mount a deer head, you'll just need some way to stretch that cape out because it's going to be a little thicker than it needs to be, and it's got to get returned back to the original size. Uh, another thing is a salt frame. I no longer use a salt frame because I got a fleshing machine. But before, when I, when I was just fleshing with a scalpel, I would put them on that salt frame. And what that does is it stretches that cape. And as it's salted and as it draws in that salt, it keeps it from being able to draw up too much. It'll hold a lot of your size in your cape as that's drying, which is pretty important if you're not going to flesh that, that cape thin. And lastly, I've got on here is a wire brush. I use a wire brush to clean mud and clay glue and stuff out of hair, off the antlers. Uh, it also is a great way to groom a deer. And uh, it also will remove dried paint, any kind of overspray you've got around the nose, nostrils, eyes, ears, whatever. And after you get done, if you have to airbrush inside the ears at all, you can take that brush and you can get that paint out of the hair on those ears. So anyway, guys, looking at all of this that I just now named that was not on the original list that you have to have. The stuff that I've got in my shop that you may or may not have at home, you're looking at anywhere from $500 to $3,000, depending on what extras you want to try to buy. But I would just take all of this into consideration in each step of mounting this deer and know that each step you will have to have some variety of all of this. So at least that'll give you an idea as to what you've already got or what you might need to buy. But anyway, guys, I hope that this was helpful. If y'all have got any questions at all, please comment below. What I'm going to do, the video where I had all that stuff in my shop telling you what you need, I'm going to put that link in the description below. And uh, you can click on that and it will take you over there to that other video. Just go to the, to the description of that video and you'll have all those Amazon links also. So anyway, good to see y'all. Hope this was helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up to like. We'll see y'all in the next video.